Samsrita Mam Adma para de Jesu Padwishantu Abyasuyaka Ahankaram Balam Darapam Kamam Krodam Chasam Stita Mamadma Pada Dehesu Padwishan Pudya Suyaka Ahankaram Balam Darapam Kamam Krodham Chasam Stita Mamadma Pada Dehesu Pradvishan Pradya Suyaka Ahankaram Balam Darapam Kamam Krodham Chasam Stita Mamadma Pada Dehesu Pradvishan Pradya Suyaka Ram 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 Ram
taking shelter of mom me atma in their own para and in order dehesu bodies graduation to blasphemy abiasuyaka envious Translation and purport by the Divine Grace, Slice Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Bewildered by false ego, strength, pride, lust, and anger, the demons become envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is situated in their own bodies and in the bodies of others, and blaspheme against the real religion. Let's repeat. Bewildered by false ego, strength, pride, lust, and anger, the demons become envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is situated in their own bodies and in the bodies of others and blaspheme against the real religion. Purport. A demoniac person being always against God's supremacy does not like to believe in the scriptures. He is envious of both the scriptures and the existence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is caused by his so-called prestige and his accumulation of wealth and strength. He does not know that the present life is a preparation for the next life. Not knowing this, he is actually envious of his own self as well as others. He commits violence on other bodies and on his own. He does not care for the supreme control of the personality of Godhead because he has no knowledge. Being envious of the scriptures and the supreme personality of Godhead, he puts forward false arguments against the existence of God and denies the scriptural authority. He thinks himself independent and powerful in every action. He thinks that since no one can equal him in strength, power, or wealth, he can act in any way and no one can stop him. If he has any enemy, if he has an enemy, who might check the advancement of his sensual activities. He makes plans to cut him down by his own power.
The world died by false ego, strength, pride, lust, and anger. The demons become envious of the supreme personality of God, who is situated in their own bodies and in the bodies of others, and blaspheme against the real religion. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for coming to see me. So the purport said here in the purport <laughs> something very interesting. Usually we envy someone else. Our envy is towards somebody else. Or violence is committed to somebody else. Here property is saying that it is not only other people we are envious of or we can commit violence to. We can also be envious of ourselves and violent to ourselves. Proper mention here. He commits violence on other bodies and on his own. How is that? He does not care for the supreme control of the personality of Godhead because he has no knowledge. <clears throat> Out of ignorance, living entities are doing so many sinful activities. For example, we are keeping the four religious principles. If one takes alcohol, whose body? The body of the person who is taking alcohol. So the violence is for who? The violence is the person who is taking alcohol. We are committing violence to ourselves. Not only to others. It is violence to ourselves. One is taking flesh, making this body a graveyard. Which body? It is the body of the person who is putting all the dead cups on the body. So the violence is to the person who is doing the sinful activities, not somebody else. We may have committed violence to the animals that we have killed, but we are also committing violence to our own self because we are also putting those dead bodies on our own body. So it is also violence to the self. Elisir says, which body? It is the body of the person who is doing the sinful activity. So we are very, very violent to other living entities and at the same time we are very violent to ourselves because we don't understand proper said here. He does not know that the present life is a preparation for the next. And so there are so many dangerous scriptures who are encouraging us that there is only one life. After death, it's finished. It's a dangerous philosophy, it's a dangerous scripture because when one has this philosophy, one is ready to do all kinds of sinful activity because after this, it's finished, it's finished. There's no penalty, there's no reaction, it's finished. This dangerous philosophy. It is not finished. It is just a change of another environment for another sinful activities, which actually means to entangle ourselves more. He does not know that the present life is a preparation for the next. Because this knowledge is not there. We can do all kinds of sinful activities and thinking that it is finished. When death comes, it's finished. It's finished. So I have nothing to worry about whatever sinful activity that I do. No. It is not finished. 
it's a continuation. That is why <coughs> living entities are suffering on all the sufferings in this world. And we are perplexed and bewildered. Why so many things are happening as if there is no God in control. God has failed in his control. Now he just sat helplessly looking at everything and seeing things go wrong the way it is going without being checked. This misunderstanding is due to our ignorance about the reality of things. The demons are envious. This verse is telling us that any one of us who has envy, we are demons. And because the envy is there, we cannot tolerate someone else. Intolerance is due to envy. When one sees that someone else is making advancement, either materially or spiritually, or a brother or sister is making advancement, and one is becoming envious, a demonic mentality. And when one is envious of someone making advancement, we can manifest that, we can show that in many ways. How we are envious of, make, of, of seeing a brother or sister make advancement. In the material world, when one is making material advancement, one, one is succeeding in, in material activities and is getting the reward, becoming more opulent, getting more facilities. Other friends are making plans how to bring him or her down by duping the person or different ways or even assassinating the person. In spiritual life, we, we, we can also do in a very soft way. As we have a hardcore criminal, they are also soft core criminals. By being envious of a devotee is very, very dangerous and risky because it is Vaishnava Apara. To be envious of a a devotee. Very dangerous because Vaishnava <laughs> apparat. When one is envious of a person, we cannot tolerate to hear the glory of the person. If our spiritual master appears here now and he said, My dear devotees, I want all of you to give me one devotee. I want to send him or her back to Godhead now. Who am I going to appoint? Huh? Who will I appoint? <laughs> myself. <laughs> myself. Gurudev is myself. It's me. Who will I appoint? Go sister? Go brother? It's myself. What is that? Envy. Demons. <laughs> we cannot tolerate to hear a devotee is being glorified. That is envy. So <clears throat> we can know where we are in our Christian consciousness by seeing if we are happy seeing a brother or sister glorified for the wonderful service they are doing. That is the sign, one of the signs for advancement in Christian consciousness. I'm happy that a brother is making advancement. And not just to say it, but I am physically, emotionally or spiritually supporting the devotee to make advancement. This is a spiritual way. This is a spiritual way. This is the science of devotion. That we, those who are making advancement, those who, who are really fortunate in Christian consciousness, they try to support each other. <clears throat> it's a sign that there is no envy. 
Krishna consciousness is a system of support. It's a supporting system. That we are supporting each other in Krishna consciousness. Hmm? These days in Hare Krishna temple, if a, a brother or sister is sitting by our side and is dosing in Japa, we keep quiet. We pretend to be transcendental, not to see the devotee. We become Pramahamsas. A, a, a brother or a sister is sitting very close to us and is, he, he has spent 30 minutes not chanting, 30 minutes chanting one round and we keep quiet. What is that? Envy. Sleep so that you don't complete your rounds. So I'll complete my own and go back to Godhead. You remain here in my soul. Sleep. That is envy. It is not Paramahamsa. For those who are Paramahamsas, they will be very conscious of the environment. They will be very, very conscious of what is happening. And they are very, very attentive to everything to be sure that everyone around is being encouraged in their practice in Krishna consciousness. Everyone is getting encouragement for, from everyone because this is a supporting system and nobody goes back home, back to God alone. That is not the process. Nobody walks to the kingdom of God alone. We have to go with the people. How are we going to go with the people when we are envious of their progress in their Christian consciousness? So let us check and see the amount of envy which is there in our heart by seeing if we are appreciating others' devotional life by supporting their practice, by constantly reminding each other about what we need to do to become a real devotee. It's Christian consciousness. We are happy to see another devotee being glorified or being appreciated. Oh, they don't appreciate all the sacrifices I have rendered in this media, giving this person who just came yesterday glorification. And I have been here for years and nobody has seen what I'm doing. This place is not good for me. When one thinks like this, it is a wonderful sign, a wonderful signal to show that we are also not properly <clears throat> functioning in our own progress. So, because of this envy, because of this demonic mentality, the demons are against the Supreme Personality of God. Not only they are against the Supreme Personality of God, they are also against the Scripture. Because the Scripture is teaching about the glories of Krishna, they are also against that. Not only are they against Krishna and the, the Scripture, they are also against the devotees of Krishna who are teaching the glories of Krishna. They cannot tolerate to see devotees glorifying Krishna or making advancement because by glorifying Krishna and supporting each other, one will automatically make advancement. Therefore, they make all kinds of arrangement. The prophet said here, if he has any enemy who might check the advancement of his sensual activities, not <clears throat> anyone who, interf who interferes with our sense gratification becomes our enemy. Not someone who supports our Christian consciousness. The person who goes against our, our sense gratification, the person becomes our enemy. A person who advises us to give up unnecessary things that will not make us to progress in Christian consciousness, but is, but is helping us to see the things we need to do in our Christian consciousness to make advancement, we make the person our enemy. So,
We don't want to be corrected. We don't want to be chastised. We see chastisement as wrong thing. But devotees who are very, very fortunate, they see chastisement as wonderful, as pure love of Krishna or Krishna's pure devotees. They see chastisement as something wonderful in our Krishna consciousness. That you will see throughout the life of so many Vaishnavas. Advaita Acharya. He deliberately, he deliberately invoked chastisement on his head. Sri Chita Mahaprabhu will come and touch his feet. And Advaita Acharya try, he, he will try to block him. But who can block the Supreme Presidente of God from doing what he wants to do? Who has the power? Even the Vishnu cannot do that. So Chitam Abu will succeed in getting the dust from his feet. And Advaita Acharya was feeling very bad. I called for him. I called for my Lord. He has come and he's hiding. I will I expose him. He's pretending. He's not doing his duty yet. He's hiding. I will I expose him. And Advaita Acharya says, yes. I know the best way to expose him. I know the best way. So Advaita Acharya, the Supreme Presidente of Godhead, changed his philosophy. It was a deliberate attempt to get chastised because he knows the benefit of chastisement. There is a lot of purification that comes with a chastisement from a pure devotee. So Advaita Acharya decided to preach after studying all the scriptures, I have come to the conclusion that Gyan is superior to Bhakti. I can prove it. I can prove it. This is a conclusion of my studying the scriptures. Gyan is superior to Bhakti. Bhakti is like the mirror, is it not? And Gyan is the eye. Without the eye, what is the use of a mirror? What is the value of a mirror without the eye? So, Gyan is superior to Bhakti. Every day he was given this Bhagavatam place. <laughs> Such a good. <laughs> And Sri Siddha Mahaprabhu was hearing him. He was hearing him from Sadipu. He was hearing everything. He's a super soul. He knows everything. He was hearing. So one day he told Lonit and Nana Prabhu, let's go to Sadipu. Let's go to Sadipu. Lonit and Nana was, yeah, yes, he said, let's go. They started going. <clears throat> and they walk and walk and walk. And when Passed through one one cheetah who is a, <laughs> is a householder Goswami, but he drinks pan wine, he takes alcohol and he calls it bliss. Bliss. But Chita Mahabu and Lonnie Tenana Prabhu, they passed there and they went to Adota Chari's house. <clears throat> when they got there, Adota Chari was on the Asan. And as soon as he saw Lonnie Tenana Lord Chita Mahabu coming, he roared. I say with all my strength that after studying all the scriptures, the conclusion is that Gyan is superior to Bhakti. And Lord Chitambu went straight to the asana and gave him a heavy point. What do you say? Adota Chere said, yes, I said Gyan is superior to Bhakti. Chitambu started pointing him from all directions. You call for me, you call for me. And I came and you are cutting my body into pieces. What nonsense are you talking? I got that child and said, yes, I got it. I got it. I got it. Where is that pretense now? Show me. I've gotten it. I got that child's wife came. Uh, my husband is an old Brahman. Don't make me a widow. Chitambu didn't hear. He didn't hear. He didn't hear. <laughs> 
he, he performed his pastime and brought a, a daughter child out. So a daughter child said, yes, you have been pretending. I call for you. Now is the time. Do your duty and save us. The pure devotees, the fortunate devotees, they don't see chastisement as something wrong, something bad. They see it as a wonderful opportunity that we need to be corrected. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, some of us feel that chastisement is a horrible thing, a very bad thing, so we don't want to be corrected. When somebody corrects us and points out the nonsense thing which we are doing, the person becomes our enemy. And we, we start to plan so many ways to bring the person down. This is demonic. This is demonic. Prophet said here, if he has an enemy who might check the advancement of his sensual activities, he makes plans to cut him down by his own power. It is demonic. <clears throat> Thinking oneself to be independent, that we are above correction, is demonic, demonic mentality. He thinks himself independent and powerful in all, in every action. Yes. Since I have money, since I have power, since I have position, who else can advise me? Who else can talk to me? I know better than everybody. This is demonic mentality. Divine consciousness is different. It is within the divine consciousness that we have this language, servant leader. It is nothing like servant leader in the current world. This word, servant leader, exists only within devotional circle. It's a leader, but a servant. He is, a, he is to serve, not as a boss. He's a servant leader. And his duty is to lead people towards Krishna consciousness. So in history, <clears throat> our scripture mentions so many wonderful personalities, Ranti Day, and all of them. They are all servant leaders, and they led people in Krishna consciousness. They never feel that they are the supreme and everything belongs to them. They know that we are simply servants, the caretakers, what Krishna has given to us. Therefore, whatever is within their control, they use everything for Krishna's pleasure. That's the difference. Everything for Krishna's pleasure. Maharaj, you did that he told Krishna, the reason why I am performing this Raja Shriya sacrifice, it is not for my own interest. I want to establish you as the supreme personality of Godhead. I want the whole world to know that you are the supreme personality of Godhead. It's not about my, my power, it's about you. It's a devotee. But <clears throat> demons, how do they think? There is no other person there who is God than me. It's the mentality of King Vena. It's the mentality of Ravana. It's the mentality of Kamsa. All of them, Jirasanda, Sutupa, all the demons. Their, th their thought is, no one is there superior to me. And anyone who dare say such thing is dead. I must strength. And Kaliuga is progressing so wonderfully that this mentality we can also bring it to a devotional sense, to Christian consciousness. And instead of using our position to help devotees become Christian conscious, we we'll use our position to victimize and intimidate other devotees <coughs> in their Christian consciousness. Gita is telling us this is demonic mentality. It should be given up by the process of Christian consciousness. And that begins from hearing that to be a demon is dangerous. We are creating more hellish conditions for ourselves. But to be a devotee is wonderful because we are creating heavenly spiritual 
situation for ourselves, which is our original nature. Being in the spiritual world with the supreme position of Godhead is original nature. So Krishna is speaking this to give us the opportunity to cultivate divine quality, like he told Arjun. My dear Arjun, you should not worry because you are controlled, you are maintained, you are within the divine nature. So don't worry. You are different. The devotees are different because you are culturing the part of divinity. Hare Krishna. Comments, question. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for explaining the equal part to us. Um, Maharaj, as we practice our spiritual life, and uh, we also read that hear the text, such text really. uh, And during the course of practice, we, uh, our lower natures are also revealed to us more and more as the clearance takes place. And uh, at times the situations become very suffocating. Situation becomes very suffocating to, to find among a, within ourselves a person whom we do not want at all. And uh, how to face that situation and how to go ahead from that situation. How much time it will take? Can you please elaborate? Yes. <coughs> we are put in a situation where we have to serve with a person whom we don't want, right? When we are in a situation, we find our lower natures within us. Mm. And uh, say we find our envy, over, envy within our hearts and lust, etc. Which is revealed to us more. Earlier we thought that we are pure. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. But as we progress, it takes maybe it's a permit to some years to more, know more and more. And sometimes Krishna arranges situations where still the, the lower natures come more. So how do we face those situations? How do we go ahead in spiritual life? Yes. I had, I had. And when Srila Prabhupada installed the deity here, Christian Balaram deity, this Christian Balaram deity, and he told the devotees, your problem is finished. Your problem is finished. Huh? Problem is finished? <laughs> Baba said, yes, the problem is finished. If you have any problem, please go and tell Krishna Balaram. Tell them, this is my problem. <clears throat> you have helped me to see the amount of envy in my heart. Now, thank you for this. I'm begging you now, please give me strength to control it. Give me the strength. On my own, I cannot. Therefore, I'm begging you, please give me the strength to control this demon. For me, I am powerless. I cannot do it. But your mercy can help me. If we sincerely tell the Lord, if we sincerely pray, the Krishna will do something. So, we are not prayerful. The Christians, they say, the Christians, they say, why do you worry when you can pray? They have this conviction, they have this faith that Krishna, the deity we have is not just marble is directly Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu confirmed that. He, this is directly the son of Maharaj Nanda. If he is the son of Maharaj Nanda standing here, how will he not hear our prayers? If we sincerely pray, if we really present our problem to him, this is the problem. What is Darshan? Darshan means to go and fold our hand before them and see the ornaments they put in their body and the, 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 the dressing, how expert, expertly the, the Pujari has dress the deity that day? No. 
Direction means tell the Lord. After appreciating his beauties, you tell the Lord, this is my problem, please help me. In the 11th canto of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna himself, he directly told Udeva, pray to me like this, my dear Lord, please protect me who is trying to surrender to you. It's the 11th canto of Bhagavad Gita. Krishna is telling Uda, pray to me that help me who is trying to surrender to you. Help me. If you, Krishna is teaching who has to get him. Right? Krishna, yesterday we mentioned it. Nobody becomes satisfied simply by just the philosophy. Krishna just does, does not just speak the philosophy. Now he's telling us what we should do practically. Pray to me. Tell me your difficulties. If you do this sincerely from the heart, some of us you only pray, we don't mean it. Such prayer will not work. If you sincerely pray to Krishna, tell Krishna the problem that he's telling us to do, we will do something. Krishna will knock off this all these demons that are harassing and disturbing us. He will knock them off. And Bhakti Nottakura told us, all the demons Krishna killed, they all represent the narratives in our heart. And each of them, when we hear, the reason why we should hear this person is to kill those personalities. But we don't allow Krishna to kill them because we don't really hear. When we sit, we don't hear. Our body is sitting there, but we have gone out. So we don't hear. If you really hear the purpose for which Christians perform those activities and his devotees are speaking those activities will take place in our, in our life. <clears throat> so we are not prayerful. That is a problem. We should tell Lord Krishna what is our difficulties, where we are weak, where we need help. We should tell him. We should thank Krishna and the spiritual master for helping us, giving us realizations. We should confess to them our inability in becoming a successful devotee. And we should beg them for all the offenses we are making. This is why Krishna is standing here for us. We're not taking advantage of technologies available in Christian consciousness. That is how we have problems. We should pray to Krishna. Tell them our problems. Sincerely. Hmm? The Christians are getting their materials, material desire fulfilled by praying because they have faith. We should also have faith in Krishna. And pray, tell them the difficulty. We need, we need the strength. All our charas they prayed. Bhakti Nottakura, he prayed. Oh, Vaishnava Takuras, alone I have no strength to chant the holy name of Lord Krishna. I beg you, therefore, please be merciful up, upon me with a particle of little faith. Please give me the treasure of the holy name. It's Bhakti Nottakura praying. And Jeev Jago, he said, Bhakti Nottakura begged. And he received the holy name. He didn't just take with Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. No, it was a process. He begged. We should learn the science of Bhakti. And apply it. We should give all this just mentality of being theoretical devotee. We have never had that theory make a theory make perfect. We have not had I'm yet to hear somebody to convince me that a theory makes perfect. What I've been hearing and have accepted and believe is is practice makes perfect, not theory makes perfect. So let us learn how to apply all the technologies in Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, this answer answers all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> My question is already answered, but still I would like to put up the question. Like you said we should pray and we are not getting the effect because we are not hearing. So 
Facebook and able to sit down and sit in there. But still, like, uh, as devotees, sometimes what happens is we are so rigid in our heart or the ego is whatever the reason. When some, someone tells us even simple things like Prabhu don't waste prasada or you forgot to switch off the fan, mm -hmm. we feel offended sometimes. So, yes. so how do we change this mentality? This is why we should read this verse again and again, demonic mentality. To become offended by someone correcting us, demonic mentality, so we hear this. We have not had. <clears throat> a devotee asked the Prabhupada, he are always telling us we are not the body, 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 we are not the body. So, you, can you start telling us something more? So the Papa said, no, because you have not had me yet. When, when you have had me, then I will tell you something else. You have not had me. We are hearing, we are not the body, but how many of us here behave like that we are not the body? Eh? How many of us here behave that we are not the body? We have a little headache, we don't attend Magalarati because I have headache, I have fever. Is that the body or the soul? The headache is making me not to attend malaria. I have malaria fever and I'm not attending malaria. I'm not attending program because I have a headache. Is that body or the soul? We are the body. We are the body. So the Papa said, anyone, that's the first canto of Bhagavata, anyone who believes I am not the body, I'm not the body, just are not the body is an impersonalist. The one who believes I'm not the body and is acting on the spiritual platform is a personalist. So it is not just sufficient to hear I'm not the body. Act like we're not the body. Do things perfectly. Yes. So it's a brother or a sister is telling us, please put up the light when it is not needed. When you can see your hand in the morning, when you can see your hand, put out the light. Who are you to tell me this? Ashura. <laughs> Ashura. <laughs> Demonic. So let us hear this constantly and become convinced that yes, a person who is giving us advice do we pay him or her? Do we pay people to give us advice which is good for us? After all, after all, the person who is giving us advice, he or she is not doing that very thing. So if the person is not doing it and is telling you don't do this, that means the person loves us. The person is telling you no illicit sex. And the person himself or herself is doing, that means he's envious. But the person telling you, no illicit said, and him himself has said, not dream, means he loves yours. It's common sense. Hmm? So let us hear this again and again and again until one day we'll hear. Then we'll, we will understand, oh, thank you very much for correcting me. Thank you. You care for me. You love me. That is why you are doing this. Contribution. All right. <laughs> I have another lecture. <laughs> yes. Six stage. <laughs> okay. Something more. One thing before we go. Okay. Thank you. Is it clear? From? All right. Yes. Uh, you. Very nicely, how we part. Uh, oh my God! Keep my face. Mm, looking for the pitch. Uh, how we commit violence on our own body. But can you put some light when Prabhupada says that uh, actually one is envious of his own self? <coughs> yes, it is there. Proper explain that there, here the purpose. 
we are envious of ourselves because when when I when, when I think that I'm envying you and I am doing all kinds of schemes to bring you down. What is that? Everything I think I'm doing to somebody, it is myself I'm doing. So in the fourth canto of Bhagavatam, Suniti told Dhruva Maharaj, her son, do not wish anyone bad because whatever you wish others will surely come back to you. So wishing someone bad, it is not actually the person, it is the self. So we are harming ourselves. In ignorance, we are thinking, I'm hating you. I'm doing this to you. And nobody is doing anything to anybody. We are simply doing everything to ourselves. Because whatever we do to somebody must surely come back to us. So we are simply creating karma for ourselves by thinking that we are doing somebody else. That is how we are perplexed in this world. Some of us are working in office, or we are, we are devotees in the temple, and for no apparent reason, a brother or sister is giving us so much anxiety. Right? So we think, why this Prabhu of Mata is after me? Why? Because this is what you have done to him or her in the previous life. Don't think that we are beginning anything now. We are not beginning anything. Everything has been going on. We only come to meet it. <clears throat> Nobody is beginning anything. We only come to meet what is going on. So this message is given to... <laughs> just look at the, the philosophy. Do not... Because she saw her son was very angry and he wanted revenge. Immediately, Suniti saw this. Oh, my dear son, please don't wish you are stepbrother bad. Do not. I know you are angry, you are disturbed by what she has done. Please don't think ill of her because you are think whatever you are thinking now will come back to you. Careful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Simon Bagwad Bitaki, yeah. yeah.